I'm kind of not scared. There's been a few times where, you know, I realize what the hell am I doing? You know, I, I could be killed out here and nobody, nobody would know. <laughs> but in the interest of writing good books and, you know, making good interviews on documentaries or whatever I do, I figure, man, if I get the chance to see something, I better chase it down because, you know, that might be my only chance. As long as I don't die, it makes a good story. Welcome to the Lone Star Play Podcast. I'm your host, Patrick Scott Armstrong. Join me and a famous guest. We discuss their career, life, food, Texas, and everything in between. Let's get started. Hi, guys. Welcome to another episode of the Lone Star Play Podcast. I'm your host, Patrick Scott Armstrong. What an amazing episode. Who's this a picture of? Huh? Let me turn. My phone keeps ringing. I'm sorry, guys. Hang on one second here. Jesus. I'm professional, Patrick. That's Bigfoot. Anyway, uh, Bigfoot right here. The man of hair. Um, Yeti could be a different thing, I guess. But uh, Bigfoot, you know, Harry and the Hendersons. Um, we've all heard stories about this. I can't stop looking at this picture. Um, you know, there's many pictures of, of, uh, what Bigfoot looks like. This one was just like scary and sort of, you know, growling. Look at that face. I mean, oh, you, that's scary <laughs> looking. Can you imagine coming up on, uh, one of these in the woods? Just, yeah, be pretty scary. So yes, my guest is Lyle Blackburn. He is a famous cryptozoologist. What is cryptozoology? We break it down in this podcast. So by the end of this podcast, you'll know exactly what cryptozoology is. And Lyle Blackburn is a very uh, reputable, famous um, cryptozoologist. So, um, you know, yeah, basically studies, you know, these this phenomenon and stuff. So Bigfoot, Loch Ness Monster, um, you know, different sightings of different monsters um you know whether it be he talked about like a dinosaur in the congo you know i don't know okay it's got some name i, I don't know Me, you know i don't know look my mind is open right um it was a very interesting conversation you know we talked about all these things obviously bigfoot's like the number one sort of like mythical monster that's out there right that, that, that people uh, know about um and i don't think there's one person on the planet who's uh, at least america like who hasn't heard of bigfoot who hasn't heard of bigfoot there's been sightings in texas in fact he said there's a ton of sightings in texas for bigfoot i found that fascinating i didn't know that they have conferences you know it's a big deal obviously right so is it real is it not the idea that there could be some species that has somehow managed to elude us uh, this whole time, so, like this particular, I know we're finding species all the time, but usually it's like a little spider or, you know, whatever, a little critter, right, that runs around uh, sort of thing. Nothing is like big and majestic as this and, um, you know, who knows? It, it's definitely um, quite fascinating and I love talking about it. So it was really cool to talk to about somebody who really knows about it. You know, you'll bullshit with your friends right over a couple beers or or whatever, but that's not the same. Um, yeah, I love this. I, you know, I actually, I really enjoyed this podcast, to be honest with you. It was really fun to talk to him. And, uh, you know, I wasn't here to like poke fun or this or that, or, or let's giggle about it. It was like, dude, this is what this guy does. You know, he takes it very seriously and, and therefore I take it very seriously. Um, and he's a great guy. You know, I, I honestly could, you know, would love to have him back on to talk about more things and more honestly, even after we did the podcast, like all of a sudden I started to see all these different things in the news, maybe like that I didn't notice before, right? It was like, damn, boom, 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 all these different things and all these things popped up on my YouTube as well. They were just like pointing me to it. Um, that's the algorithm, y'all. We're being watched, okay? You know, so yeah, it, it, look, th this is it's quite fascinating. So, you know, do you believe in Bigfoot? Do you believe in the Loch Ness Monster? Do you believe in these, you know, these otherworldly, not even otherworldly, our worldly things? Um, 
And it is quite fascinating. So this is not about UFOs. This is not about ghosts. Although they're in the same sort of, you know, category of, you know, unknown things or, you know, things we're searching for the answers to, right? So, but this is specifically about those type of um, monsters. I mean, he called them monsters too. So, you know, that idea, I mean, just the thought of monsters, that sounds, you know, that sounds scary. But uh, yeah, I had a lot of fun with it. It was really cool um, and just really enjoyed Lyle's uh, professionalism and his expertise and knowledge on this. And look, you know that famous uh, Bigfoot video? Everyone knows that video, okay? Of It's like from the 50s or something, right? It's in the river. And you see like the, the you know, we'll, we'll show a clip of, the, of this video, a little section of it. You see the guy walking, you know, well, the guy, Bigfoot walking across. And it's like the most well-known video. And to this day, to this day, that's like the best video there is of Bigfoot to this day. And Lyle knows the guy that, that filmed it, the camera guy. And that guy swears up and down that that was real because there was all this stuff that came out about, well, it was a guy in a suit and, you know, it was a hoax and blah, blah, blah. And I heard that my whole life growing up. Um, but Lyle swears up and down that that guy says like, you know, he's not saying the guy's not in a suit. OK, but he's saying, I don't know who that is or that thing or person or I wasn't with, you know, them, you know, sort of deal. So, you know. What, what do you do, guys? Um, so I thought that was fascinating, you know? And to be honest, maybe we need to reach out to that guy who shot that video and, and talk to him. You know what? That's what, Patrick, hello. So it's all, it's all, it's all light bulbs are going off, guys. So maybe we'll do a follow-up on this depending on the reception of it, um, of this episode, all right? So if you want to see that, you want us to get him on, let us know. All right, let's get to the episode, guys. Sorry, I've done a long intro. I just, this is a cool episode, okay? This is something fun to talk about. <laughs> Come on, who doesn't watch like ancient aliens and the search for a Bigfoot on Discovery Channel and shit like that, right? Like, you're gonna be into it. I mean, there's something coming out on Hulu right now about Bigfoot. I mean, again, it's every year it becomes a part of the zeitgeist at some point. Every, there's always some sort of like new documentary coming out like, we really found him this time. You know, we found footprints. We found a pile of scat, you know, that shit. They'll, they'll be like, we find a pile of shit. It's Bigfoots, you know. <laughs> it's like, it's the crazy. They never find like a home. That's what I want to see. When we find like a little log cabin out in the wood, it's like, okay, this is Bigfoots. So I don't know. That's what I'd be looking for. But anyway, it's all exciting, right? It's, it is exciting. It's fun. It's exciting. So, okay, let's get to it. Law Blackburn. That's super cool. Before we get to that, of course, a word from our sponsor, Texas Real Food. Hey, got to pay the bills. Texas Real Food. Here's a word from our sponsor. Hi, I wanted to talk to you about what's on the Texas Real Food site that's more than just putting in your zip code and finding, you know, the coolest butcher, farmer's market, restaurant around you. There's also other resources on the site, recipes, articles, and one in particular is called the Texas Mom Blog. It's awesome. Faria Khan is writing these beautiful articles. You can really learn a lot about Texas, just giving you a lot of other things to think about. Food, family, everything behind that goes into food as well. So just different topics and uh, conversations. Definitely something worth checking out as well. All right, back to the show. All right, texasrealfood.com, of course. Don't forget to check it out. Okay, before we start the episode, as always, I'm going to remind you about our social media, Lone Star Plate TX, or just search the Lone Star Plate. Please follow, like, subscribe, whatever it is that you do on that particular social media to stay connected with us. Just hit that button. Just hit, hit the button, okay? Just hit the button. And then, you know what? Tell a friend, and then tell him, you know, hit the button, okay? Just, just, just hit the button, okay? Come on, come on, just hit the button. I'm, <laughs> I'll stop saying that way, hit the button. Okay, so social media and of course our YouTube channel, if you're watching this on YouTube, thank you so much. 
please subscribe. Hit the notification bell so you can be notified about all the new videos that we release every week, which is pretty much every day, new content. Two episodes a week. Come on, y'all. What you doing? Conversations on YouTube. Definitely a lot of stuff going on in the comments, you know? Mm. Okay. So we got that. Um, let's just get to the episode. Lyle Blackburn. Here we are talking about Bigfoot and, you know, Loch Ness Monsters and all this stuff, right? Okay. It's a good one, y'all. Lyle Blackburn, cryptozoologist and author. Enjoy. Oh, man, look at all that stuff. Wow. My home office. Dude, that's awesome. That is I bet it goes further, right? I'm assuming. Oh, yeah. It's like this. It's 360. It, dude, wow. That's a lifetime collection, right? I mean. Yeah, I've done interviews about just the collection alone. With, you know, monster. Oh, I bet. Or stuff. I bet. Sure. <laughs> absolutely. Of course. Dude, you could have a fucking eBay account. Like, you could. <laughs> When I need I'm extra sure. money, I just start loading stuff on. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> totally, totally. That's awesome. No, Lau, thank you, man. This is awesome. I'm, dude, I'm so stoked to talk to you. You have no idea. Awesome. Uh, this is like our first time ever having this sort of conversation on our podcast, and we're almost 150 episodes in. So, and I love talking about this stuff. That's the crazy thing. You know, uh, you know, cryptozoology. This is like, dude. <laughs> This is right up my, this is like, this is what I do in my off time. You know what I'm saying? This is like, this is perfect. Um, and you're a musician. You do a lot of things, man. You're an author and musician. You know, you, you wear a lot of hats, um, including the one you're wearing, which I love, by the way, as well. Right. <laughs> yeah. If I don't wear this hat at this point, people go, where's your hat? So, you know, yeah. I just put the hat Trademark. on, you know, it's like, okay, I just wear the hat. Dude, that's kind of cool, though. You know, speaking of like just having like sort of a thing you're known for, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Like, I wish I had some. I, I, you know, I got nothing, man. Like, I think that's cool. You know, I was thinking about your like the goatee. Like, dude, I always respect people that have stuff like that because that takes time, effort. Right. I mean, that doesn't just come together. You know what I'm saying? Like, oh, it does. Yeah. You can't just shave real quick. You know, you got to go around it and that whole yeah. thing so yeah it, it takes the extra level but you know i gotta uh dude i'm all about it i love represent it represent the kind great. of dark texan and you know the hat it's like that that's the thing that when i came to kind of embrace the whole texas thing you know when i was on tour or anywhere else it sort of brought a little bit of that texas attitude or texas flair you know, in my own dark cowboy way, but it was cool. And that became something that to me represented Texas, you know, hundred percent, man. Absolutely. That's like one of the iconic image it, right? Like, absolutely. No, that's cool. Especially if you're traveling around. That's one thing I always talk about too, on the podcast, uh, cause we're very Texas. This is a very Texas oriented podcast, obviously. Um, I got Texas flags everywhere here. Um, you know, when you're traveling, Texas is a is like the only really state known in America, right? Like people know America, maybe California, but even that, like Texas is like people just know Texas all over the world, you know? Absolutely. Especially in right. Europe, being on tour over there, you know, with various bands all, all through the years, people will come up, oh man, you're from Texas, you know, you do you live on a ranch? Do you, you know, are you a <laughs> cowboy, all that stuff. And you're like, yeah. you know, yeah. you're like, well, no, but my uncle has a ranch. <laughs> exactly. Exa dude. Best answer I've heard. Exactly. It's always something along those lines of, and that's true. It's like just a couple degrees. Well, I do know somebody with some, you know, or this or that, or, you know, but yeah, dude, the, the, uh, you know, what people think we, I lived in Europe for a few years, like what people think we, you know, live day to day. Although I've always lived in cities in Texas. So, but again, even if you live in the city, you still know people with land or whatever, right? That's how they say it out here. Oh, I got some land. Right, yeah. Come out to come out to my land, you know, like, uh, so yeah, I think that, but it is funny. They think we ride around with, uh, six shooters, you know, riding horses, um, but which it doesn't help that any TV movie, right. Always that's sort of the, what they promote as well, right? Every story about Texas, this and that. I mean, 
it's kind of hard to get around it to to be frank with you sure you know and that that's yeah. okay we gotta yeah it's great to have something Represent. that people recognize you know just from Good a point. style of dress or any or something you know yeah and plus texas look we do have a lot of cowboys here i mean there's yeah. just no no you know we're big supporters of ranchers and uh farms here you know in the states and uh yeah should have had them on the podcast uh the, the real deal you know uh those are tough guys you want to talk about tough guys those are tough guys you know the Absolutely. real real deal it, it like i see like uh I've been watching a lot of UFC lately, you know, MMA, that that's where it's been in the news. So I've been watching it, whatever. And they are tough guys. Um, but like, I do think about that, like real tough guys day to day. You know what I mean? That really put in the work. It's it's those type of guys, man, that, that uh, you know, keep this state and keep this country going. To be fair. Absolutely. So anyway, man, uh, Lyle, let's get back to... Uh, uh, you know, while we have you on, man, um, look, let's talk a little bit about where you're from in Texas. Um, wh where'd you, did you grow up in Texas here? Were you born here? I did. I was born in Fort Worth and my grandparents had a long history, uh, there. And my grandfather worked for Swift and Armor Company, which was some of the, uh, beef exports and things coming in and out of the railways in Fort Worth. Uh, when I was a little bit after I was born, my parents moved to a suburb of Fort Worth. So that was right in between Dallas and Fort Worth. So I grew up there and, you know, I've what was that here? What, what was that called? Euless. It's called Hearst Euless Bedford and Euless is the city I live. That's in. where I grew up. Really? I grew up in. Yeah, I grew up in Euless, man. That's crazy. No How kidding. crazy is that? Yeah. yeah well, from. Uh, <laughs> from when I was like six to 11 or so. We lived there about five years, but I went to school in the Grapevine Colleyville oh, okay. school district, right? So I'm okay. Bedford, I live, I've yeah, lived yeah. in Bedford. I've had apartments there. Yeah, absolutely. Man, that's crazy. Yeah, most people don't know that little uh, community, but it's thriving. It's totally changed Oh yeah. Uh, it's, now. It's just one giant city now because, you know, I grew up there and then I moved to Dallas, you know, in my late teens and I lived there yeah. most of the time, but I've since moved back because it's a little more easy going, but really, I mean, from Fort Worth to Dallas, it's just one giant metropolitan totally. area. You know? Yeah. That's why you say DFW here, right? It's like DFW. Yeah. Yeah. It's like, absolutely. It's cause it's all in between connected and now it's going North South, right? It's just oh, expanding. Yeah. It's crazy. Yeah, it's getting crazy uh, out here. OK, so that's awesome. So you grew up in Texas. Um, what made you sort of get into this sort of thing that is crypto uh, zoology? First of all, I guess we should define what what that is exactly. What what does that mean to somebody saying that? Well, it, it's sort of a, a default title for somebody who researches unproven animals. Uh, you know, most well-known like Bigfoot, Loch Ness Monster, yeah. Mothman. There's a lot of these creatures that people report sightings, but there's no definitive proof to say they do or don't exist. So, you know, I, growing up in Texas, I was exposed to a lot of legends, even some of them local, like the Lake Worth Monster, uh, just close to Fort Worth, which was said to be this sort of white, hairy, goat man, sas Sasquatch type creature. Um, oh, really? The Legend of Boggy oh, wow. Creek, which was a famous movie and creature said to live in southern Arkansas, just across near Texarkana. Um, okay. It was a Sasquatch yeah. creature. I was looking at that one online. Um, East Texas, believe it or not, has a lot of Bigfoot sightings. So I, my, oh, my really? father was a hunter. So I was kind of into that rural outdoors life. And as a kid, I just loved monsters, monster movies. And then I, you know, when I heard of Bigfoot, I thought, oh my gosh, you know, something like that could be in the woods. You think, do you think Bigfoot is the, is the most well-known, like of them, oh, of all yeah, of them? Or what do you think? Yeah. Bigfoot, Bigfoot, you know, which most people think lives in the Pacific Northwest, but with the TV shows and stuff now, obviously people are aware there's sightings of these type creatures everywhere. So yeah, I was just enamored with this stuff as a kid. And, 
I, I became a musician and a slash writer. And I remember it being in tour buses and stuff and I'd be reading Bigfoot books or whatever. And, yeah. You know, just following, learning about just the whole phenomenon of people seeing a creature that, you know, may or may not exist in the woods. So it was just, Oh, it's I, exciting. You know, I, I mean, that stuff's exciting. Who is not interested in that? That stuff draws in big number, right? I mean, you mentioned Bigfoot. I mean, no matter what, where you stand on or whatever you believe you still, the conversation is still uh, inviting and sort of contagious and, um any sort of new discovery or whatever it just sort of makes you think about it a little bit more you know the what if uh possibility you know what i mean because you can't ever discount it it's hard to really just disprove forever right so it, it, the 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 sort of lore or legend can sort of live on forever you know what i mean yeah that's sort of exciting it's just one of those things that you, i mean if you just look at you know cable network tv how many shows on there are covering things like Bigfoot, Mothman, Lake Monster, Monsters, it goes yeah. on and on. So there, there's a definite interest in it, just whether, whether you totally believe or whether you're just like, wow, what is it these people are saying they saw? That's me. That's where I'm at. I'm just, I'm open. I'm open to the idea. I'm open to anything, to be honest with you. know what I mean? I mean, that's just the truth. I'm open to it, of course. I mean, it doesn't sound that far-fetched the idea of a Bigfoot or a community of Bigfoots, right? Like, you know, uh, that, that's, that sounds pl totally plausible. Um, the, the only thing, I guess, you know, we can, this is where I'd like to dive in. What, what are some of the biggest um, hurdles, right? Or, or questions you get that go against it, right? I guess the big one would be, why haven't we found them yet, right? Like we're sort of all over the planet. We're sort of, we got camera, we got, why wouldn't we have some sort of definitive evidence by now? But they also said the same thing about aliens and look where we're headed down that road right now, you know? So I don't know. Yeah. I mean, 120 years ago, people discounted sightings of uh, Mount gorillas, but you know, we know that those exist. There's pockets of things. There's a lot of forestry and swamps. And the short answer is that certainly you would think by now we'd have a, a really good picture or some, a body or bones. But if you think about how few of these creatures there may be, yeah, um, it's hard. I mean, if you're in Washington state and there's 30,000 bears, you know, how many times do you run across a, a dead bear? hardly ever if if at all and there could be a surviving population of these things 250 or 300 of them uh scattered yeah. about i mean what are the chances you're going to run across one of those especially if we presume they are of a higher intelligence and maybe try to avoid people or bury their dead or you know try to exactly. stay elusive so it's it's not yeah. totally impossible and what keeps me engaged is just when I think, ah, this, this, this can't be, I'll meet a perfectly credible, smart individual who ran across something in clear daylight that they can't explain. And I know they're not lying. They just were there in a particular right place at the right time. When I interview those, I'm like, man, I don't know. They, they saw totally. something. I, I t dude, I get that a hundred percent, man. Like I get it a hundred percent. That's really what reels me in as well is, is true testimony, right. From people and reputable people, right. You think, why would this person even make, you know what I mean? Uh, what, what's like, what's the craziest story you've ever heard or, you know what I mean? About Bigfoot, uh, that you thought, wow, or the most reliable or credible, whatever you think, you know, whatever you think would be cool. Yeah. I mean, there's a lot of a varied ones, you know, scary ones, a hunter sees one attack hogs. One of the most credible ones was a guy who people in the small town of Falk, Arkansas, just, just above Texas, people said, yo, you got to talk to this guy. He saw something when he was younger and he doesn't like to talk about it. He, he's a very honest guy. And I finally persuaded him to have a conversation with me. And he even took me to the property where he had this incident. But when he was a teenager, uh, they lived on this property near where a lot of sightings of Sasquatch-like creatures have been reported. He was out there late one evening fishing on their private pond. 
and he heard something kind of walking in the leaves. It was late February, a lot of leaf litter. He heard something crunching around. He thought, uh, it, it sounds big. It could be the neighbor's bull got out or something, you know, because no persons would be really trespassing through there. It was private land. It's kind of uh, you know, remote. And he said, all of a sudden, he looked up and he saw this ape-like creature, which stood upright, walked on two legs, was about between six and seven feet tall, walk over an embankment. It was walking and did not see him because he's sitting in the boat, quiet, because he's fishing. The thing just walked up and it was about 60 feet from him. It walked up and over an embankment and disappeared. And of course, this guy just you know, was frightened beyond measure. I mean, to look at something yeah. like that and to realize it's not a person, it's not a person in a suit, it's some kind of animal. I mean, this guy just, you know, freaked out, rode to the edge of the uh, pond. And when he made noise, the steps stopped. And at that oh, point, Jesus. he got out and he heard the oh. thing take off running and he took off running for the house. But uh, Hell yeah, I would have taken off running. Are you kidding me? Hell yeah. Uh, I just oh felt man. I got to know this individual. And I mean, he's he's definitely not making this up. Uh, he's very credible. He's just an, a normal guy, has a family, yeah. takes his kids to baseball games. Just no reason to make this up. And he wasn't seeking publicity. So those are the accounts where I'm like, man, I don't know how to explain what he saw, but he definitely saw something that doesn't fit in our known you know box yeah dude and how many people you think don't say something because right they just say oh people are going to make fun of it right or whatever they're just the story stays with them right oh absolutely um, you got to figure that most people don't say anything what are they going to do call yeah. the news the papers you know I, yeah. <laughs> if somebody comes in my house like the cable repair guy or some they see monsters and bigfoot stuff around and first they're like what are you into this? You know, they're kind of standoffish, <laughs> but about five minutes later, well, I don't believe in this, but you know, one time I was in the woods and exactly you, like, weird thing. And you're like, there you go. <laughs> totally. Absolutely. Oh man. Wow. What a crazy story. Absolutely. I would have been scared, frightened. There's no uh, doubt about it. And look, anyone who's been out like deep in the woods or camping or this and that just knows like, there's just things we don't have all the answers to. Right. I mean, look at the ocean, for instance. Right. Like we don't know everything that's going on in there. So I, I, I would even be yeah, pressed to say on land as well. We just don't know everything that's out there. And yeah, absolutely. The story, these testimonials of, of people, those are the most uh, compelling uh, for sure. Have you personally ever had any experiences? I've never, you know, de definitively seen something that I would say was a cryptid, but there's been a couple of occasions when I was in areas that have a lot of sightings, one of those being in Arkansas, one of them in Florida, when I heard howls or something moving or something I was, one time something was hitting on a can in a really remote area of Florida in a national forest, and I tried to pursue it into the brush with a flashlight and whatever it was kept just one step ahead it sounded like it was running on two legs didn't sound like it definitely wasn't a deer i don't think it was a hog and i don't think it was a bear but i didn't actually see it and and in arkansas something following myself and another guy and howling at us and this howl was just unearthly it was spooky and scary and um you know again i didn't see it but and this all goes in context with when I write a book, I mean, I'm kind of like an investigative journalist. I've got to go to the areas where people said they saw whatever they saw so then I can get the full scope and bring the reader to that area. And so thusly, it's exciting. I can go into the woods and and possibly experience something myself. That's what I'm talking about. That's how you do it. That's, I mean, that's it. Like, that's exciting uh, for sure. You know, what I'm, what I'm, when you're telling that story before, I don't know if anyone listening was thinking the same thing that I'm thinking. 
why are you chasing these sounds into the deep forest in the dark with a flashlight? Are you not scared? Like, you know what I mean? You got a weapon with you? Like, I'd be frightened. Like, you know, are you thinking they're going to be on good terms? I mean, that's a question. What do you think Bigfoot's, you know, or any whatever is out there is going to be friendly, you know, to approach them in that way? I don't know. That's what I'd be thinking. Well, there, there's a lot of accounts where there's aggressive behavior. And I, I think, I mean, like any animal, some would be scared and run or some would be curious and some would you know be territorial i don't know i just i'm kind of crazy like that i'll go and <laughs> i mean we, we rode into swamps in the in the middle of the midnight oh my miles God. from anybody with no lights it's kind of exhilarating wow. but I, i'm i'm kind of not scared there's been a few times where you know i realize what the hell am i doing you know i, I could be killed out here and nobody, nobody would know <laughs> but in the interest of writing good books and you know making good interviews on documentaries or whatever i do i figure man if i get the chance to see something i better chase it down because you know that might be sure. my only chance and if i as long as i don't die it makes a good story yeah <laughs> yeah as long as you don't die i love that Oh man, no, that's so crazy. Um, wow, I, I just can't even. Are, what, are there any places you are dying to go that you haven't had a chance to go? Well, you know, beyond, I've been a lot of places, especially in the southeast and southern parts of the U.S. Um, and I've been up to places like West Virginia, where stories of this Mothman creature exist. Um, but beyond that, it would be cool to go to a couple of places. One would be the Congo in Africa, where people have reported seeing a living dinosaur, a uh, creature kind of like what people think of as a brontosaurus. Um, stories oh, that shit. existed, natives showing pictures that look like dinosaurs saying this is out there. The Congo would be cool. And then in Sumatra, which is an island of Indonesia, there is a creature called the Orang Pendic, which is kind of a smaller version of Bigfoot, in which there is some really, really compelling sightings by wildlife photographers and other people. Um, so those would be ones abroad that I really haven't had the funding or time to do. But those are like, you know, real Indiana Jones stuff. Fuck yeah. Oh my gosh. This sounds so exciting. Um... I never even heard of these. I, and I, I do, you know, I do go down some YouTube rabbit holes, too. You know, I haven't even heard of some of these. Um, the Mothman you mentioned, is that the Mothman prophecy? Is that the whole thing? Is that all the same thing? I don't even know what, what I'm yes. talking about here. Right. Yes, it the, is. Okay. The, the, the Mothman was a human flying humanoid type creature first reported in Point Pleasant, West Virginia in 1966. And throughout a year, people going into this remote area, the McClintic wildlife area outside that little bitty town, reporting sightings of this surreal looking creature. Um, that culminated with the collapse of a bridge that went to the Ohio, uh, over to Ohio. And that all this weird activity took place, including UFO sightings, men in black, the whole deal. A, a writer named John Keel wrote a book called The Mothman Prophecies, which was later sort of loosely adapted into a Hollywood movie in the 90s. And that kind of made that the Mothman. That's the famous. that's the Richard Gere one, right? Is that yeah. that one? OK, right. so yeah. In, yeah. in the years that have followed, I mean, there's a Mothman festival I've I've been a guest speaker at for several times. It draws like 10,000, 12,000 people. It's it's a wow. big deal up there now. Just that yeah. shows you the interest in this stuff. Sure. I mean, that's a popular, I've heard that, that one for sure. And seen things on, I mean, that's just like crazy to, to think about that stuff. Like, Oh my God, if that's like really, Oh man, that's nuts. Um, you know, real quick, before we move on from Bigfoot, I, I do want to move on from that, but I want to quickly, I, I don't think we really explain what is Bigfoot, but what people think it is or where it comes from. Well, I mean, obviously, there are several theories that have been proposed. The first kind of ground level one was that it was some sort of uh, primate um, uh, or a hominid, some kind of offshoot. You know, people you say missing link, but truly, it's, it, there's a lot of diverse branches of our own hominoid hominids that, you know, could have been in, in the ape 
species or or a relic hominoid in recent years you know and probably because we've had so much trouble maybe proving these things people have proposed that either you know they're aliens or they're coming from another dimension and and they're supernatural creatures stuff like that but i mean there's no more proof of that than there is that it's simply a undiscovered uh, hominoid but that's quite a leap right like to think it's just an animal we haven't discovered yet to it's coming from another dimension right because that requires you to now have a belief in another idea right which is multiple dimensions right or if it was aliens right now you have to have this other belief as well um so yeah okay i get it there's all these yeah. different um and to me that stuff you know i mean it's already seems improbable or fantastic that a that a creature like that could exist a biological creature that we haven't discovered but to say they're coming through portals i mean why is it that they're always sighted in places where large animals could be they're not like coming out of a portal in the walmart parking lot yeah <laughs> but down on my street you know because a portal wouldn't why would it always intersect with that or if it's aliens you know bigfoot is so derivative of of a humanoid of so much of a terrestrial design yeah. people have reported sightings of wild men for hundreds and hundreds of years and the native americans have stories so i just feel like it you know it's not a ufo thing and i don't know about the portals i just think they would pop up you know right here oh. while we're doing a podcast or yeah. <laughs> yeah no uh that makes a lot of sense um no i i think it you know the i mean the most fascinating theory to me is just this uh species we haven't discovered yet but it's you know it's intelligent it elude the idea that it eludes us is a big deal right because that would uh lean into the idea of why we haven't found them yet you know what i mean i mean that's a big deal if the animals you know they don't want to be found there's really small numbers in comparison um and we're still discovering species um yeah that that definitely seems the most um likely but it still seems likely you know, I mean, yeah, and, it, and, and for me, uh, you know, I got to point out that it's equally as fascinating about the creature itself as it is just the whole phenomenon that somebody in modern times would report seeing a monster. 100%. And, it, it, and like in the case of Point Pleasant, where the Mothman, that it has transformed into this cultural icon of their area and there's festivals. So it's like a phenomenon that affects people and towns whether the creature is real or not it is something that is a part of our you know collective uh culture absolutely i mean of course you know I, I there's definitely just a lot to this world life existence universe fate whatever you want to say right all of it together um that we just don't understand and know about you know and that's it, you know? So yeah, the idea that these things, uh, and like you said, just these testimonials, how do you get around these things? You know, how do you get around that stuff? How do you get around these people, these legit people saying these things they truly believe and truly saw, um, you know? Yeah, absolutely. It's, it's hard to, um, it's hard to just dismiss. So, you know, so quickly. Completely. I mean, even if you say 95% of them were mistaken identity or wishful thinking, there's a good 5% that are hard to explain. And people think, oh, it's just hillbillies yeah. or something that see these things. It's not at all. I mean, biologists, yeah. doctors, military guys, hunters, I mean, very reputable, your neighbor next door kind of thing. Absolutely. Oh my gosh. Absolutely. I remember that famous video and I, as most people probably do, I don't even know what it was called. I can't, I, I want to say it was shot in the seventies or something, right? Seven. It's the Patterson Gimp oh, film. Okay. That's what it's called. Can you, can you repeat the name of it again? I'm sorry. It's called the Patterson Gimlin film. Got it. Roger Patterson and Bob Gimlin were two guys doing some early Bigfoot research on the West Coast, and they went into the woods of Northern California near Bluff Creek back in October of 1967 because there had been some reports of huge footprints. The loggers and guys up there had had 
found these weird prints. They went there, they had a camera and were uh, perhaps fortunate enough to capture one of these on film. And that has never been disproven. I mean, there's, you know, claims of I was in the suit, there's this and that, but there's no definitive proof either way to whether that's a, a person in a suit or whether that's a real creature. But Roger, uh, Roger Patterson died back in the 70s, but Bob Gimlin is still alive. And I've met Bob and know Bob is a friend of mine. And he still sticks behind the story that as far as what he saw, it was a real animal and, and that's all there is to it. And, and so it's kind oh, of wow. the icon of Bigfoot, you know, the, the pose when it turns I, around and looks. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, it's honestly, it's almost as famous as like the Zapruder film. Like, you know what I mean? It's like really like everybody's seen that film. Everybody's seen that clip, you know. Uh, wow, that's compelling. So, wow. So, you know him. He's your friend. And he says he sticks by that story that that's legit. Wow. He does. I'm blown. And he, I'm and blown away right now, Lyle. I'm not going to lie. I'm blown away right now. And, wow. and, and you sh I should say that he was never privy to any money. He never received anything from that film. So you would think that uh, if he was, why would he hold fast to the story that it's true if it was indeed a hoax? Because um, he was cut out of the money. Basically, Roger Patterson, his family owns the rights and gets residuals. And you're right. That's so famous. You could show that to anybody and go, what is this? People go, Bigfoot. Yeah. Um, that's so recognizable, like the Zapruder film. But Bob Gimble never made any money off of it. But, you know, he's still just, you know, is wow. an honest rancher kind of guy who lives in Washington yeah. state and says, unless I was being fooled or something, that's, that was a real creature. I mean, that is just crazy. No, that's nuts. Um, you know, he's like the Bob Lazar of the Bigfoot, right? Like the story it's old and like all these things start to come out that sort of prove it's true. As time goes on, you're like, damn man he's and he's had the same story for years you know never changed anything and um that to me is very compelling too right that somebody's story just inevitably just doesn't change just stays as they stick by it over a long long period of time um you know wow man that's fascinating that is absolutely fascinating gosh I'm I'm still I'm blown away by that because uh, yeah that that footage is so um, up in the air you know it's always um, they've shown it in documentary you know Discovery History Channel stuff um, breaking it down it look that is the and still to this day it's almost seems like the most real footage I've still seen to this day you know yeah it's, it's still, still that footage remains the best which you know yeah. Uh, and that's the thing. You that's know, kind of crazy, right? That's kind of crazy after all these years. There's been, you know, people saying, oh, well, that, that was, I helped make the suit or I did this or that. And they tried to recreate it on some, I won't say the network, but one of these big shows, they said, oh, we can recreate that. They tried, and this was the guy who said it was his modified gorilla suit. They tried to recreate it. You look at the thing and you immediately go, that's a guy in a suit. It doesn't even remotely compare to the, you know, the realism of what you see in the Patterson Gimlin film. So I'm like, if we can't recreate that now with a network budget in modern times, how did they do that in 1967? Absolutely. I mean, exactly. It's like, uh, oh man, yeah, absolutely, hundred percent. Wow, that's fat. That's just absolutely fascinating. Um, you know, speaking of Texas, I, I don't want to get too caught up on Bigfoot, but I absolutely love talking about Bigfoot. God, that's so fascinating. Uh, my nephews have been into Bigfoot. He's been, he's only six. He's in first grade. He's been bringing books home from the library all about Bigfoot. Just wants to know everything about Bigfoot. And uh, so I've been reading them all these stories lately. Um, so anyway, but so Texas. So what's the most famous Texas lore or monster or story or animal right like what's the most famous one that we could discuss well um that's or the best one or whatever you whichever one you think would people, be the best one i think about. now always ask about chupacabra 
That's one that okay. Not Chupacabra, of course. Yeah. How can we not say that one? Yes. Okay. I know Chupacabra. Okay. So the the, the short on that is that back in yeah. the, back in the 1990s, stories came out of Puerto Rico of a creature that stood on two legs and was about three or four feet tall and it had bulbous eyes and sort of scaly skin and spines down its back and it was said to be attacking and drinking the blood of livestock particularly goats which it got its name el chupacabra which translates to goat sucker well in the 2000s there began to be sightings in texas and other parts of the south southeast and southwest of a four-legged canid looking creature which had no no hair it had pointy ears and elongated snout and looked like a really scary looking coyote and the media called that oh chupacabra which is oh exactly what was reported initially in the latin american countries but anyway that's since become just sort of an icon of the weird creatures of texas and there have been studies and bodies found and photos of this which are not definitive yet but have shown that it's possibly a hybrid between a uh, a mexican wolf and a coyote or something like that um to create this bizarre hybrid canid thing that could very well be feeding on livestock oh my god jeez that's <laughs> that's so scary right to just uh even think about i mean it makes sense that even in the animal kingdom the circle of life if you will that there would be these sort of one-offs or these hybrids these things that would just occur naturally right no rhyme or reason uh and it just doesn't always go right you know and they're aggressive and weird and you know Oh, that's that's crazy. Because essentially, you know, a cryptid, a cryptozoology doesn't necessarily mean the most fantastic. You know, it it could it could be some hybrid creature yeah. that is a little bit more mundane, but but something that isn't scientifically known. So, you know, the range of this isn't just simply, you know, like giant dinosaurs. It could be, you know, even species that we thought that we know lived and were thought to be extinct, like the coelacanth fish that was discovered in 1938, or uh, sightings of the thylacine, which is known as the Tasmanian tiger in Tasmania and Australia. Those have gone extinct, but people report sightings of them. So there's a big range of all kinds of weird creatures out there in the world that fall into this category. No, that's crazy. I mean, especially you mentioned a dinosaur earlier. Somebody there, there's there's a, a dinosaur walking around Jurassic Park shit happening. Yeah, there's a couple That's of crazy. those. The there's one known as Mochilium bimbe, which is the Baranosaurus looking type thing in the Congo. There's also sightings of pterosaurs or pterodactyls. And I interviewed a couple of witnesses, two sets of two witnesses who saw something in Oklahoma. They saw it fly over and swore that it was leathery skinned a huge bird-like creature that looked like a dinosaur a flying dinosaur and there were two That's people crazy. in both cases that didn't know each other that reported seeing similar the similar animal in a small area so i'm like again like how do i explain this they're not making it up is there a, you know is oklahoma got you know pterodactyls i don't know so Oklahoma have pterodactyls. No, I love that. That's, I mean, gosh, that's so crazy to think about, um, you know, dinosaurs walking around. I mean, you would think they can't really get around very fast. And if they're that massive, I don't know. I mean, oh man, I mean, it's like, still fascinating to think you know, about. In places like Africa and the Congo, there, there, you know, there's not a heavy population out there. And, sure. you know, you've got hippos and other things that live in those general areas. They're big animals. And, yeah I got, you know it's uh, who knows it's not it's improbable but not totally impossible sure absolutely of course again it's hard to like disprove the whole notion of it right like um yeah um 
What what about the Loch Ness monster? Because that's another you know very famous one. That photo is again super famous. I mean, you can just show it to anybody, and they would you know Loch Ness monster. I mean, it sticks out. Um, you know, in a lake, right? It's a lake, right? I mean, that that's that one seems because that's yeah. a, a a specific area. They'd be easy to comb through the water and either find it or not. Yeah, I mean. It- that it's it's in a lock, which is essentially a very deep, dark lake in Scotland. And over the years, there's been a lot of sightings of all sorts, and there's been probably more science involved in the search for that creature than probably uh, you know many of the others over a span of a long period of time. Um, and they were, you know, they have done sonar scans and thermal scans, all, all kinds of stuff, which have kind of kind of ruled out the possibility that this is like a plesiosaur or some huge dinosaur species that, you know, s- survived, but hasn't ruled out that it could be, the sightings could be legit. It could be a giant eel um, or some other phenomenon that creates this illusion of a creature. Um, oh, there's I also okay. a way that there is a exit to the sea at certain times. So there is theories that perhaps it's something that's come in from the wider oh, ocean. Um, but oh. the Loch Ness Monster to me is over the years has less possibility now. Bigfoot still remains a big one. Loch Ness is kind of, it, it's more enclosed. It's easier to say, you know, there, there's not a big dinosaur in here, but, you know, it's still, it's still a strange phenomenon. Absolutely. Well, are there anything I'm like, not any monsters or monster. I hate to say that. That sounds so like demeaning or something. I don't mean it that way. Any uh, lore or myths that we, that you'd like to discuss that you think would be cool for our listeners or anything we haven't discussed. Um, You know, talking about monsters, you know, I, I think it's cool to call it monsters. I mean, that's kind of the buzzword that attracts people to it, but ultimately, yeah, it's like a, when, you, when you're a kid, it's like uh, monsters, Loch Ness monster, yeah. and Bigfoot's a monster, Yeti. But as you become an adult, you, you look at it a little bit more like, well, is this a creature? You know, maybe it's not as fantastic as we think. We may discover a Bigfoot and realize they're only six feet tall, not eight feet tall. Because if you see something like that in the woods, you're going to go, oh, my God, you know, it's huge. <laughs> you know, but I, I think in terms of Texas, you know, like I said, there there's some really cool legends. Um, the Lake Worth monster, which uh, back in 1969, people outside of Lake Worth, which is only about uh, 30 minutes from where I lived in Euless and towards Fort Worth, people began reporting this strange goat man type creature. And uh, it got a lot of coverage in the Fort Worth Star Telegram. And ever since then, it's like something that's just gone on and on. I mean, I've done a, I've done a segment of Monsters and Mysteries in America television show that covered the Lake Worth monster. Like, wow, people still remember this. And, um, you know, occasionally I get people contacting me saying, you know, I was there back in 1969 and I saw something in the woods that I couldn't, you know, identify. And there was something out there attacking people. Um, And and it becomes a fabric of of this area in Fort Worth. And then East Texas is huge with Bigfoot because, you know, like I said, we were talking about traveling around. People think, oh, Texas is like a desolate cowboy, you know, (laughs) looking uh, terrain. But East Texas, the Piney Woods, has you know, miles and miles of forestry and even swamplands. And there has been a long history of sightings of of Bigfoot-like creatures out there. Uh, The little town of Jefferson, Texas, which is also known for being haunted with a lot of ghost activity, that's the the Bigfoot capital of Texas. And they host a, a Bigfoot festival out there every year in October. People come from miles and other states. Oh, really? And uh, th- it's a phenomenon that goes on. People love. Oh, wow. Subject. I didn't know that. I didn't know there's a big festival for Bigfoot in, in where where'd you say it was? Jefferson? Yeah, it's called the Texas Bigfoot Conference. And it happens around mid-October each year in Jefferson, Texas. Wow. So, wow. you know, it just, again, it just shows you that people, 
the um, stories there. You can right? find local legends anywhere of just strange and fantastic things. And it's, to me, I think it, people love that idea that there is still some mystery in the world. You know, there's still things we don't exactly know, you know, and that could range from things that are in our own backyard or our woodlands like Bigfoot. Or, and of course, you know, are there aliens? Are there things visiting? And all this phenomenon that I think gives people something to study and research and think about outside the mundane, scarier world of politics and pandemics and all this other stuff. It's like, you know, those are the known things that exist that you know, go on and on, but these other things have open possibilities and there's possibilities of discovery. So I think it's appealing for that reason. I mean, a hundred percent. I totally agree with that. Um, what, what about, what about aliens? What do you, what's your opinion on that? Um, curious. Is this like, a? are people who are into cryptozoology, are they typically also into the idea of UFOs and, you know, extraterrestrials? Uh, there's almost some division between that. Usually people that are into cryptozoology kind of are into that. People that are really into UFOs are into that. And then you've got, you know, sort of the ghost hunters. You know, they do cross and merge. But, um, you know, for the most part, you know, it's just something there's so much to these topics sure. that you could just delve in and stay within that zone. Uh, for yeah. me personally, I mean, of course, I I think that. The possibility, I mean, I can say almost certainly we're probably not alone in the universe and it's huge and vast. There is no way to know um, really very much beyond our own planet that we can be certain of. And, and certainly there could be visitors that have come here. There can be any number of ways they could come here. And there's, there's again, it's just like with Bigfoot. There's been sightings of craft in the sky that we simply can't explain and those could be of extraterrestrial origin hard to say i mean there is like compelling video footage now hmm. right like really compelling stuff that's come out in the last few years that's kind of hard to dismiss again just you know just dismiss it like well that's nothing it's like uh hello yeah a lot of the top people right are saying we don't know what this is uh how you know it's like, how can any normal person just know more than them? So I just trust these people, right? Saying, I just don't know what this is. Uh, yeah, but the video footage has come out. I mean, even just in the past week and a half or so, did you see that uh, like night vision video they released? Oh, I haven't seen that. Oh, gosh. It's like a Navy. The Navy released it. I mean, again, this is like the government is releasing this footage now. And it's night vision footage over a warship. Uh, they're just, you know, a couple hundred meters above them and it's three like triangular like pyramid shaped objects just floating you see it floating i mean it's the craziest looking footage i mean it's almost it's almost just mind-bogglingly like they're saying they don't know what it is flying over a warship right and they have video footage of it yeah. why is this not what everyone's talking about i don't get it's like what is this thing um that's fascinating i mean that's gonna to me, that almost lends credence to other things like, you know, these other potential creatures that, you know, it almost lends credence to see, look, we don't know everything. We don't have all the answers. Yeah, that's you know, absolutely true. We don't know. And something like this comes out and, it, you know, it, you know, that involves a lot of conspiracy and stuff because you can't be sure if the government is just saying they don't know what it is or they do and they don't want to say because you know we got homeland security and what have you sure or or they don't just simply don't know and so there's always that distrust distrust kind of thing going on with ufos but nonetheless sure. there's something on that film that so far it can't be explained and there's been several you know really really good ufo uh footage captured that remains to this day a, a total mystery absolutely and again there's there's still compelling video footage as well and stories uh from right from these other things bigfoot and and whatever else you know whatever you want to say right there's there's uh, again compelling th those are again the most compelling to me right just people talking about ufos too when i hear you know 
people that I know are not insane and they're telling this story. I mean, just to be blunt about it, right? Like that where they're telling this story, I just believe it. it's just like, why would they lie about that? You know, you can just tell they believe it. And that goes with any number of things, right? Whatever the subject is that they're talking about. Uh, it's hard to just dismiss these things. I mean, it really, it is. It's, you, and, it, you, and that's fascinating. You can't disprove it. You can't, it, it, yeah. you may not be able to prove it, but you can't disprove it. So therefore it just sort of goes on and on with a perpetual mystery. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. That's exactly that. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. You can't get rid of the, the lore because it's too hard to disprove. But again, that mystery should stay open. These, these things should, you know, it's not like we should forever shut the door on it. You know, um, it should still remain um, something that's discussed and open. And again, as long as people still keep having sightings and bringing things to the table, you sort of have to keep revisiting uh, the conversation. Right. I mean, at this point. Absolutely. Uh, you know, what is there been um, what's recent in is there been anything in recent news that's sort of piqued your interest um, about anything? in particular? Uh, I mean, there's, there's always sort of an ongoing, you know, Bigfoot photo or something that's been out there. Um, it doesn't even have to be Bigfoot, anything. I mean, just anything in recent news. It, it doesn't even have to be. Uh, you know, not too much. I, I've kind of been exploring. I've been researching some. Uh, us, usually I find a topic for a book and I just get immersed with just sort of blinders on whatever it is sure. I'm looking at to the nth degree. So, uh, you know, some of the news may or may, may or may not pass me by, but, uh, you know, I'm always being sent like an audio file of some sort of a howl. I just got one the other day of somebody saying, you know, well, you know, this, this was captured in the woods in whatever area and what is it? And I mean, I've listened to it and I compared it to, bears and cougars and other stuff and i'm like man that whatever's howling is very unique and different and while there's no way to say it's a bigfoot it's something that kind of rolls across my radar constantly with people submitting things or showing a photo and saying what do you think most of it you can just dismiss but there's these ones where i'm hearing this howl and it's super spooky and it seems credible. It is definitely not a hoax, but you know, what is it? But what is it? Yeah. Oh man, there's nothing worse than a fucking howl. If you're out, you know, in the dark, in the woods and you don't know what it is. I mean, are you kidding me? Oh, it can be very That's scary. Crazy. I mean, I've heard howls like that and I can only imagine if you're just sort of, you know, out there with the family for a rugged outdoor weekend and then you hear that <laughs> in the woods, you're like, Hmm, maybe we picked the wrong place to camp. Oh, uh, honey, kids, pack it up. <laughs> right? That's uh, oh my gosh, yeah, that's insane. Um, well, I'll tell everyone. Um, you know, first of all, you know how to any sort of thing you got coming up, you want people to know about you, anything, any place you want to send people to check out anything. You know, I'll let you sort of handle that that uh that angle right now. What do you think? Uh, okay. Um. On May 1st, I'll be at the Ohio Bigfoot Conference, which is a huge conference that happens every year um, in Ohio. And there's a list of all my appearances on my website at lyleblackburn.com. Um, there's some coming up closer to the Texas area, the Fat Monster Festival on June 19th. They're, they're just really fun stuff out there if you want to. Uh, yeah, the, these things are kind of getting going again. I mean, obviously last year was sure. a bust, but some of these yeah. in a certain extent uh, are cranking up to, you know, get people out and doing stuff. Um, yeah, for sure. I've got, um, you know, several things coming up. I'm narrating a documentary called Howl of the Rougarou, which is going to cover sightings of werewolf-like creatures in Louisiana. And I've narrated a number of, uh, documentary films on cryptids and other subjects, um, which are available on Amazon Prime. So if you just search Lyle Blackburn, you'll see a number of, of films that I've been involved in. Uh, my books are available on Amazon. Um, I've got six books that cover various things. Um, That's awesome. And uh, 
My band uh, is a Texas-based band called Ghoul Town. We've been around for 21 years, and I kind of juggle that along with writing the books and doing television and so forth. But uh, we have recently put out an album called Curse of El Dorado, and we kind of took off some time from sh live shows. But we, you know, we've played all over Texas and all over us and europe and other places so hopefully we can do some live gigs soon but you can check out ghoul town at ghoultown.com or there's a link from lyleblackburn.com for that awesome and we'll have links in yeah. the description and all that stuff as well uh to go along with it well that's great any social media are you on social you're on social media yeah you can find me on facebook uh, lyle blackburn official and um, twitter youtube um and in a new social app called clubhouse trying to keep up with all of them at this point um, i know so yeah I'm, know. I'm out there and those are the places you can really follow my adventures because i'll post photos of creepy stuff i find or you know stories of uh, local cryptids and all that sort of stuff that's awesome man this is so cool uh well look man i can't wait to have you back on um you know, later down the road and revisit some of this stuff. And maybe there's some new stories and I'm sure I'll have uh, new thoughts about it. This has been so exciting, man. I got to tell you that this really is. Uh, thank you, man. This is going to be a great episode for our, our listeners and our fans, man. I yeah, really absolutely. Uh, really appreciate you having me on. It's always fun to talk about this stuff. No, that's awesome, man. No, we can see, I can see your passion, man, you know, for it. And, um, you know, I could just see that you see the, the reality of the situation, you know, and that's, um, that's in, in, in and of itself, uh, exciting. Um, so yeah, man, no, this is just such cool stuff. And again, whether you believe in it or not, it's still fun and exciting to talk about. And the idea of it, um, is exciting. Um, so yeah, this has just been super cool, man. So I really do appreciate you taking the time today. Well, I really do appreciate it. Absolutely. The Lone Star Play podcast is produced by Texas Real Food. Go to texasrealfood.com and you can search your city for stores, butchers, restaurants, farmers markets, and more who are using fresh, artisanal, organic sources. It's a fun site that brings all natural options all together. I hope you enjoyed this episode. For more information, go to thelonestarplay.com. I'm your host, Patrick Scott Armstrong. Until next time. <laughs>